This week, everything about managers. Bro, well, you can't look at that and just say yeah, know, first. Yeah. Italian, French, You're German, acting Spanish, like the people English. I put ahead of him have a mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> but I cannot part. tell you the pelters we are going to get. Man. You didn't even put that in the group chat. You said it directly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think he's a bit of a for that. No, I absolutely have hated a manager before. But then you got like Roy Hodgson, who was like just an absolute legend. Is that you or Palace Recruitment? Or the South London. No, they could have won talent. about me. <laughs> <laughs> Big Sam. <laughs> Big Sam is the one, shot. actually. <laughs> You've got to get Big Sam the go. This point, like. <laughs> they think managing is like playing football manager. I miss him. I miss Klopp. Yes, people, welcome back to Ball Talk. My name is Noah, and I'm here, as always, with footballers Lewis and Ken. This is one of our insight episodes where me and you get to know everything about the footballing world from these two professionals. If you've missed them, go back and check on the last couple of weeks uh, of episodes. They've been on fashion and tactics. But this week, everything about managers. Lads, you know football. According to the comments, you don't. Uh, <laughs> do you know about managers? I have started this week with a little five-question quiz. Okay. Yeah. Don't let me see the answers, by the way. No, no, no I've got his card down here. He's, okay. not cheap. He's a good guy. Yeah, okay. I've got the questions here. You're going to have five to ten seconds to think about it. And then I'll ask you both. Okay, yeah. There's no time limit, no speed round. We're casual here. We're yeah. friends. Nice. So, question number one. <clears throat> In December 2023, which manager returned to Sheffield United for a second go in charge of the Blades? You got time? Yes, you got time? Me, I know the face. I know, I know, I know the, the face. By the way, before face. this episode, Lewis said he knows everything about managers. No, I so didn't. It should be five I said I'm going to wipe the floor <laughs> with him. But I know the face. <clears throat> that is just... Oh, what I is he drawing? The non-footballer here would have got this just to just to. I know, yeah. I I reckon most people will get this. I literally know his face. I just forgot his name, which is the question. That is, I can't. I'm not. It's not an art round. I don't need you to draw him, guys. I'm gonna have to push for an answer. Yeah, no, He's no. White with grey hair, <laughs> as most managers are. Yeah, <laughs> Chris Wilder. Chris Wilder. Yeah. yeah, you did know that. I knew his face. <laughs> but, okay. okay, Chris White, nil nil. <clears throat> nil nil, that's fine. Number two, Roberto Martinez has managed Swansea, Wigan, and Everton in England. But what nationality is he? Okay, I think I've got I think I've got that. Oh, quick. We'll you can see. if you've got it, yeah. Ken can say his guess now and then you just be honest. Okay. What do you reckon is it he is? Spanish? I was gonna go Argentinian. He's Spanish. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> I jumped the gun. <laughs> you jumped the gun very quick. But I, I also thought he was Argentinian. Yeah, so I did Spanish. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, I never knew that. <laughs> this guy. You oh, see the answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like... I thought, he, I thought he was... That comes straight to my head, and I thought, you know when it comes really yeah, quick, yeah. You, you think it must be never. right. I thought he was. Unless Google is lying to me. Uh, oh, one okay. nil, Ken. All right. <clears throat> Question number three. There are two points on offer here. Two. What teams has Unai Emery won the Europa League with? Okay. Oh, here he goes again. I've got one. <laughs> I've got one. I'm going to have to guess the other. That's fine. Have I reckon I'm... Yeah, I might have. Oh, I don't know. Well, if we so both if got you a different both one. know <laughs> one, I'm trusting you to be honest, as always. Yeah. Lewis, what was your one? Valencia. What was your one? I had Valencia. Right, so you both get a point for that. Like... Guess the next one. It's not his current club, is it? Nah. Well, Villa? I'm going to guess Marseille. <clears throat> okay. Sevilla. Oh, he's got it. Sevilla. He's done two Spanish clubs. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> this guy, man. Wow. <laughs> I tell you what, what if Sevilla was his first answer and then he's heard me say... No, I had both of them. No, okay. I actually had both of them. Okay. Oh, I'm trusting you guys here. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Is that 3-1? Uh, no, no, no. 3-2. Three, no. No, no, What's no, he no. got? Oh, my God. It's 3-1. It is 3-1 because you just got Valencia. Yeah. Oh, it's, you get a point. Yeah, it's 3-1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> this is tough. Uh, I like speed. I'm a speed man. This is a... T <laughs> <laughs> Bet you are. Yeah. This team is... Uh, this question is... Number four. What manager has managed the most Premier League teams? I thought, this, I thought you were going to give us a couple of managers. Absolutely oh, not. Oh, right. Just out of anyone. <laughs> yes. Any manager. Okay. Um, manage the most Premier League teams. Yeah. Can I guess? You want to guess? Wait, wait. What, that, yeah, uh, let me just... 10 seconds. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, he needs extra time, doesn't he? I forgot the guy's... Oh, 
who's the Leicester manager who won the league with them? Ranieri? Claudio. No. Claudio Ranieri. Yeah, is that your answer? No. The, from your reaction, no. <laughs> Sorry, I should have done that. What <laughs> a stupid answer. Um, okay, I've got one. I'm going to ask Ken. No, nah, because you're not sure. I'm going to ask you yeah, first. Yeah, that's fine. You got yours, yeah? My, my guess, yeah. Roy Hodgson. Okay. We changed Big Sam. Big Sam Allardyce. Mm. We had a clip of Sam Allardyce last week, didn't we? Yeah. And he's got it right. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's so going on here. How did you know that? How did you know that? My guess, he's was always the guy though? when it's relegation. I would have had a few guesses of like Allardyce, Mark Hughes. Was when that a guess someone, or did you actually know? It was a no, it was a educated, educated guess. guess. Yeah. Whenever someone's in a relegation battle, they sack their manager. Big Sam's the answer. Yeah. He's done that so a lot. That, West Ham, Palace, it's whatever. He, I'll tell you exactly. Bolton, Newcastle, Blackburn, West Ham, Sunderland, Palace, oh Everton, God. West Brom, Leeds. No, that is fucking One, two, three, four, I five, didn't realize six, seven, eight, 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 nine. Yeah. But a lot of them would have been like one month job. Yeah, yeah. But like educated guess, isn't it? Okay. Um, it's 4-1. This one's triple points. <laughs> this <though>. one, <laughs> nah. there's two answers. Okay. There's no way you could equalize after those four questions you just had. <laughs> I will allow oh, how, triple points yes. on the last one. Yes. <laughs> but What's if you get comeback? both of them, yeah, obviously, then you get six points. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Question number five. It's not going well for you, Lewis. Triple points, though. Triple points. Could change everything. Name the two managers that managed Manchester United before Eric Ten Hag. Take your time with this. Are we going... Are we going... The most non, recent. Non-interim managers. Name the two managers <laughs> that managed games... Okay, okay. okay. Manchester United games. before Ten Hag. Because if there is an interim manager, I've it's still it. a manager. Okay. I've got it. Ken, I'm going to ask you first. Two managers. I've got mine. Got Ralph Rangnick. Yep. Should I say my other one? Just so it's just so I'm not copying. Well, did you have that as well? I had Ralph and Ollie. Before, yeah. It's one point each. Oh, we've so got it's three point each. So seven four. <laughs> Michael did... Carrick. Oh, Michael. He Carrick. did a month. Oh, That's well. what I thought you were getting at. No, but so Ralph I'm... Rangnick was was wasn't really the. Yeah, he was, was short. He? I was trying to. Build you up I know, to yeah. give you points. Ooh, I would have, no, nah, I would have never remembered. I would have never. Were they the two you had, yeah? I had Ollie, Ollie and, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, he's well, done Whatever me. the score is, you've been absolutely battered. What did he say before that he was going to do? He said, <laughs> I think he's wiped, wiped the floor with yeah. you. Yeah. How has he pulled Big Sam, though? <laughs> like, he, I mean, he pulled that. I reckon, I reckon you should have got that. No, that's but Roy's guy. managed longer in the Prem, I reckon. Yeah, but that wasn't yeah, a question. That wasn't a question, mate. Yeah, but that's where I'm going to think if, if we went most games, Big Sam's nowhere if near. If I find a text message here from Lewis, <laughs> God. think doing a little quiz at the start could be good. <laughs> I know my <laughs> nah, managers. <laughs> you can't out me like that. I know my managers. That's crazy. Can anything say? You didn't transition? even put that in the group chat. You said it directly. <laughs> yeah, <but> <laughs> <laughs> Right, lads. <laughs> oh, that's getting cut. <laughs> getting clipped. Nah, that nah, has to mate. be in there. <sighs> that was pitiful. But wow. you can redeem yourself. Okay. Can I'll I? tell you some fun stories. <laughs> okay. I'll give you extra points. Managers, what do they actually do? They do a lot, to be fair. Like, managers these days. Boys, as footballers, do you wear grip socks? Yeah, I do. I've always wore grip socks when I played. Um, just to stop your foot sliding around in the boot, mm. it makes a big difference compared to when you're wearing the, you know, the standard long socks. Yeah, yeah. For me, they help massively in like preventing blisters and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm a big fan. I think blisters is a massive thing. I found that on hard astroturf. These have been an absolute godsend. Uh, and these are Fitnit grip socks. If you want to get your own, you can use code BT10 for 10% off. Head over there now and grab yourself some. They're in the training ground before the players and they leave well after the players mm. these days. I always say like, it's more than a full-time job being a manager at the top level, isn't it? It's, it's 24 seven. Once you've finished one day of training, your mind's just on what went wrong, what am I doing the next morning? Mm. Like, and, it's, and it's the prep for that. So they do a lot more than I think people give them credit for. Yeah, it's, cra it's a crazy job. Um, I think a lot of people <coughs> that like football and stuff probably look at it and think they'd be good or would want to do it. But like, mm -hmm. I think if you've played football or if you've been in around it, a lot of players I know ha would have no interest in managing purely because you see that you don't really have a life. Like, you don't That's have really a life. interesting you don't have you a don't life. see that. We yeah, don't. They, you know that the managers watching clips from our last game, mm -hmm. he's watching the opposition's last three games for the next week. He's then 
figuring out what team he's going to pick and, how, and what areas he's going to exploit on them and stuff like that. And then he's got to take training as well. Mm -hmm. He's got to go through tactics and in training, plus the pressure that goes with it. Like as much as he's doing all of that, he's still not completely in control on a Saturday. It is it's mad. a tough job. Because he can only do so much. But yeah, you've got to do it exactly. on the pitch, If you? someone makes an individual error, he can't do nothing about that. So And you and you hear all the top managers that have been top players as well, like company, Xavi, like Gerard, Lampard, they all say a win and a loss feels better and hurts more as a manager. Yeah. Because you put so much <clears> more <throat> time into it than you do as a player, really. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it means blows them it as means, a player. Yeah. But and it tends to fall on the manager if it's a loss. Yeah. Well, unless someone's done something horrendously bad on the pitch, but it's normally only, the manager's fault. Yeah, but then let's say someone does something horrendously bad 10 games in a row. Eventually it becomes the manager's fault yeah. regardless yeah. of if those errors are just not his fault. Mm. So even, even like, let's say when there were shouts of Haver, uh, Arsenal to sign a striker, Havertz would have a good game. It, people wouldn't necessarily moan at Havertz. It'd be like, oh, Teta, why are we yeah, not signing yeah. a striker? At some yeah. point, people got really angry at him for that. But still, no one says, fair play, I'll tell you, you did work. Do you know what I mean? No, you, yeah, you don't really. get the praise. Until you, get you the win something. Negativity. Yeah. No, yeah, it takes a while for managers to get praise. It's like, we slate the manager when the club's doing bad and we mm. praise the players when they're doing well. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's very, like, it takes a while for managers to get their credit. Yeah. 100%. And you make an interesting point, Ken, that you say, it's their life. Because we see clips of, I say Arteta again, apparently, He's up at 5 a.m., does his day of work at the training ground, whatever, and then when he gets home, all he's doing is analysing games. And obviously, we sit there at a the pub, me and my mates, and go, I'd watch games for 10 million a year, but it's not that. You it's know not what does enjoyable that? enjoyable entertainment, is it? No, you're right. And what does that is, like, people think managing, like, people who have not been in football or not to, a, you know, let's say a full-time level, mm -hmm. they think managing is like playing football manager. You're picking, you're picking the team. You're doing transfers, and it's like it's all very fun. Like oh, I'm picking, I'm picking the team I want to play. Yeah. I'm buying him, selling him. When, like you said, it's not that you're watching hours and hours of footage every single day, every single week, stressing of what you've, how you're going to prepare the team to win, basically. Mm. And the pressure of it is just immense. The pressure of losing your job if it doesn't go well as well, yeah. like in your career and stuff. Like with football manager, even if you manage to, you know, get yourself in a mindset of you so desperate to win, if you don't win. Life carries on, doesn't it? But yeah. for a gaffer, apart from when you get that email saying you need to pick up your performance, otherwise we're going to sack you. Yeah, but exactly, yeah I've it's never actually played football manager. That's good. You should. Yeah. Yeah. It's good fun. Easy. Um, yeah. How do you become a football manager? Because we see a lot of ex-players doing it. Yeah. What is their path? Yeah. So ex-players generally during their playing career now, most players will, you know, be advised to think about what you're doing after football. So they'll go on a coaching course, like we spoke about in previous episodes. <laughs> yeah. UEFA, you can do lies. The, yeah. <laughs> Through the PFA, you can do like the, you, have, your, you start off with like your level one and two, which you generally do as like a schoolboy scholar. Mm -hmm. And then you can, if you choose to, do your UA for B, which takes about a year, UA for A, which takes probably 18 months to two years. Wow. And then you can do UA for Pro license as well, which takes a couple of years. Um, so yeah, they, they start setting themselves up ready for if that might be an interest. But most players will do that and not go into managing still. Really? Just because, or they'll go into it for like, you know, six months and realise what they're getting themselves into. <laughs> Troy Deeney. <laughs> yeah, and become a pundit instead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a tough ask going from player to manager, especially if it's really quick after your mm. after your playing career because, first of all, a lot of the players will see you as play a player still. How do you make That's that switch? so interesting. How do you make that switch of making them look at you differently when if I were, if let's say Ken's just gone as a manager and I know him as a player, like messing about all the time, having a laugh. Yeah. And now he's got to come in serious. He can't have a joke with us in the canteen. Mm -hmm. So you've got to completely switch that sort of attitude, haven't you? <clears throat> and yeah. also your mindset is, I mean, I've, I've managed the, I've managed, I coached the academy for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I couldn't watch a game of football without looking at it so different to how you look at it as a player. Mm. It's like, I'm just looking at formations, how they're setting up when they're pressing, oh, how they're setting up. so boring. It ruins your your like view of football, mm. almost like your enjoyment of watching it. So yeah, it's um, that's how they become really. They Ex-players become managers through doing their coaching courses and once they retire, they go into it. And then if you're not an if you're not an ex-player, I imagine maybe happens a bit more at your level. Can, could I just start now? being a football manager, say, for Sunday League and work my way up? Yeah, of course. It's, it's similar to the way players can work their mm -hmm. way up from low leagues up. Like, you can if you've got the qualifications. I reckon it's a lot harder. It's yeah. tough, man. It's a lot harder out. because it's hard to prove yourself. Where do you prove yourself? Obviously, you can <laughs> prove yourself at Sunday League, but it's just to go through all the steps is difficult. I think 
the easiest is even if you're involved in football in one way or another, even if you've played non-league, for example, you could work your way up <clears> because you could get a non-league team and kind of yeah. start from there. But yeah. if you're literally completely outside of football, it'd be tough. It'd mm. be tough to prove your worth because at the end of the day, there's loads of other... You see players that have played Premier League mm -hmm. will come down to the National League or whatever That's to what start I mean. managing. Mm. So why would... And that shows the like how rare the jobs are to the point where oh, guys that have played at the top will come down the leagues to manage. Mm -hmm. There's not many jobs. So if you're a, I don't know, a National League South team and you can hire an ex-prem player or you can... Or hire, exactly. Yeah. Which one are you hiring? You would just assume this person probably has a bit more credentials <clears throat> to do the job. So it'd be and who tough. the player is going to want well. there more? 100%. That like as well. It, before they even come in, you're thinking, right, I'm going to listen to him more. Yeah, yeah just, whether, whether he knows right or wrong. Or not, it, it could be wrong because yeah. a lot of players, I was going to say it when you was talking about like the ones that start the coaching courses and stuff. A lot of players probably aren't cut to be managers. Like you can be a very good footballer without understanding the game. Yeah, and yeah. you can be a very good footballer without having like the you know the man management skills and all of those things you need to mm -hmm. manage. So. It doesn't just because you've played at a high level doesn't mean you're built to be a manager. But players will just respect someone who's had a good career over someone who's had a worse career than they've had. And I guess that's probably more back in the day. Most managers were like 50, 60 years old because you have to yeah. put in 20 years of yeah. work to work your way up if you weren't an ex-footballer. Nowadays, it's different because ex-footballers kind of sometimes get a little pass into a big team like Arsenal. Yeah. But back in the day, all the managers were 60 years old, weren't they? I think what helps that though is the fact that, like we spoke about last week <coughs> on the tactics episode, the tactics are so much more ingrained in the player's mind, so they're they're ready mm -hmm. to go into the manager job earlier. Yeah. Whereas before the players wouldn't be invested in that, so then it might take them a long time to to gain that knowledge. I also think that because it's so tactical now, there's a chance for younger managers to prove that they're better than perhaps older managers. Like if you go back yeah. 30 years ago, that's true. management probably didn't require the level of attention to detail as it does now. So like someone who's just 60, you would just assume he knows more than the younger yeah, guy yeah, and he just so has a job. True. Whereas now it's like you can put an Arteta who is 39, 40 when he starts yeah. and he can literally just prove to you that he knows more football than a big Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, okay, you've got to give him a job. So yeah. I think the fact that the game's so much more tactical means that you can actually kind of pick people's brains out and figure out who mm. actually understands ball. Have you seen the thing with, like, it's for ex-players this is, that go into uh, management? Mm. It's, I think the most common position is sort of like the number four, number six, like holding midfielder role as a player yeah. to then go into managers. I so can, that's, I, it makes sense. That's probably maybe why that, that position's a more thinking position, let's mm -hmm. say, than, you know, maybe, a, I don't know, a left winger. Because, and... It shows because they're. If you look at look at the top managers, Arteta was that position. Pep was. Yeah. Xavi Alonso, mm -hmm. like all the ex players that are coming out. I know company you've got centre half, but a lot I of them. Centre half would be good too. Yeah, but it's because that's the but yeah, sort of mindset solid, yeah. you require from a manager, someone who <clears throat> thinks about the game a lot. Yeah. So out of us three, I'd be the best manager because that's my position. Well, that's my position as well. Centre We'd be the best centre back, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. <laughs> What's the difference between a coach and a manager? Because I think there's there's different styles of manager, isn't there? Arteta, for example, Pep, they get involved in the training. Mm. It's like they're a coach. But what is the standard definition of coach and manager? I think the lines are a bit blurred these days. I think yeah. it's sort of merged together. It used to be manager, like we spoke about with Big Sam. Over suit. He's getting yeah. shout outs today, by the way, Big Sam. Shout out Big Sam. <laughs> like overseer gaffer, and then you have a coach who's drilling the tactics and the stuff on the pitch. But nowadays, like, like with Arteta, I'm both. They're both, yeah. Like mm. a coach, a first team coach is generally he's like the manager as well, isn't it? They do they do all the tactics on the pitch, they pick the team, they're there at the front of the dugout, they mm. do it. They, that's combined in one, and then you have their sort of assistant manager. Then you have the first team, a specific first team coach who mm -hmm. is just for the coaching, don't you? Really? Would you prefer or do you prefer a manager that is also a bit of a coach? It helps, I think. Yeah. Like obviously, if a manager has his style and and he wants. A coach to take sessions mm -hmm. and that and he then then it's whatever but i think it helps from a player's perspective if the manager's kind of hands-on all in because it gives you every chance to prove yourself to him mm. like i remember you obviously talking about how sam allardyce was at the, the end of the one. day <laughs> no it's, it's actually so <laughs> relevant shout out, yeah. the way he approached the week it'd be very hard for a player who's trying to impress him to impress him yeah you'd have to impress you'd, you'd only get a chance you have to impress his 
right hand man, which is which is Sammy Lee. Yeah, yeah but and then he's not he picking a team. It yes, yeah. it's, it's so so blurred. Whereas if a manager's there on the pitch doing everything, he's there, and, mm. and you can impress him. You can show him what you're about. You can, you know, get in his head a lot more as a yeah. player. Mm. Um, so I feel like that approach would suit the starting eleven and the starting eleven only. Yeah, because they just know they're playing regardless, mm. and then everyone else would be a bit difficult. Young players as well trying to break in. You're never going to show him anything in, if he's never there. Yeah, it's true. That must be really frustrating as well. If you're working hard on the yeah. pitch and it doesn't get passed on. Because I guess a manager could then just go, no, no, I've seen him enough. I'm not playing him. Yeah. Even though he's turned up at training. Especially when new managers come in, they can just have preconceived <clears throat> ideas of about course, certain yeah, players. And course. then it's like, how am I going to change his mind? It's hard enough to change his mind when they're watching. Mm. Yeah. If they're not alone, watching. If they're not watching, yeah. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's a difficult ask. Yeah, fair play. Right, I'm excited about this one. Because this is the same question to both of you. Okay. Different experiences. Yeah. Would you ever want to go down the managerial route? If you've done a bit of it, tell us your experience. Yeah. And would you go that step further? Yeah, so I've done, <clears throat> I've coached for, if, well, fully, I've coached the under 15s at Crystal Palace Academy and the under 12s for like a full season each. Mm -hmm. And that's like not really full time. It's like pretty much full time, but just a bit short of it. Mm -hmm. And that was. A bit too much. <laughs> really? Just I, like just for the situation I'm in, I wouldn't want to do it now. I wouldn't want to. I, it's it's a lot about developing the players, which I like. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy that. But mm -hmm. I'm very competitive as well, so I want to win the games. So if I was to manage or go into it again, I'd want to do it at a first team level yep. where you're trying to win every like week in week out. But it's then the route to get there. Do it like I wouldn't want to do it at a non-league or something where rude. No, yeah, but I'm just being honest. Like, yeah, 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 fair. And to get to the top level, you could work your way up through the age groups, at, through the academy, let's say. Once you get to under 18s, under 21s, which I could, you could probably do in a few years, then you're just going to get jumped. Uh, people are just going to jump in front of you who are the ex-players, ex-Premier League players. <laughs> yeah. So you're sort of just going to be stuck there and you might not get your opportunity. So You think your experience has kind of put you off it a bit? Not my experience has put me off it. I just... just from what I you just know, just from what I know anyway yeah. about it, has, yeah. uh, has put me off it. But and I'm also very young, so I'd, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to go into it now again. Yeah, but maybe in the future. Yeah, I wouldn't rule it out. Mm. Big sound, mate. If England come calling, <laughs> Lee Carlson, you might <laughs> not want it if you're in. <laughs> Ken, you're playing at the minute. Yeah. Is it something you thought about? Yeah, you think about it all the time. Like, I think when I was like 18, 19, 20, I always assumed that if I stopped playing, that's what I'd do. Yeah. As I've gone older, I kind of saw the difficulties of it. When I clocked that, wow, it's really all in and the pressure they go through. Like if you watch a manager watching a game, mm. like if you're on the bench or if you're sat there watching, but you're close by, like the stress they look like they're under. And that's crazy. the enjoyable bit, by the way, the, the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. meant to be the best part. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm pretty weird in the way I'm wired. Like mm. I feel like I, I wouldn't mind that that kind of life. So I feel like it's definitely something I'd consider. I don't know where I'd be in it's 10 exciting, years time. Isn't it? I don't know where but, I'd be in 10 years time, yeah. like in terms of how my career's gone, will, will I have other things going on in my life, whatever, I don't, I don't know. In the football world. Yeah. If, if we do, then I don't then need to do. manage. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is like, Ken, I, so I'm the, I, I'm the, with what you said, like in terms of it's stress, it's your whole life and you have to be all in. I'm also, I also like that, but mm. it's, it's almost the route. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's like, yeah. That bit don't put me off the the stress and the fact that yeah, all yeah. that doesn't put me off. I understand what you're saying. It's can you actually do it? Is it the route is it, to is get it there? Feasible? Is feasible? Like, yeah. yeah. I yeah. guess because you know that it's probably ten to fifteen years until you get to a like high high level. Well, no, until, until, until you can even work. get the until you can even get near it, and mm. then that's what I'm saying. You could do all that. Yeah. You can spend ten years coaching the academy with no weekends, and the money's not great, mm. <laughs> and then. And then you're not even you're most likely not going to get the shout because of the, like the trend is now it's all ex players yeah like yeah. who have played it for England or national teams mm. yeah it's it's like for me I think my route would always be I'll get all my badges done while I'm playing yeah and then wherever I'm at like when I'm probably about to retire or something that will probably have a bigger impact because you see some players that just literally walk into a role at their club it could be like yeah National League it could be League Two whatever. Mm. But that gets you into a role. And once you're in a role, then it's about how good you are. And, and sure. So it really depends. But yeah, the pathway is probably the biggest question mark, not mm. the actual job. Yeah. Do you think you'd be good managers? 
Yeah. Yeah. Back Listen. Whoa. Uh, the under 15s. That's my proof. There you go. They won what, the. Or best, did you do? They won the floodlit cup in the. Uh, so they won like the basically the best under 15s in the country. Wow. Debut season. Is that you or Palace recruitment? Or the South London. No, they could have won talent. it without me. <laughs> <laughs> they could but have won. you were there and they did win. <laughs> but so. Exactly, I was there. Fair enough. <laughs> I did help them. But no, they were, they're a ridiculous age group now. They'll be first year scholars now. Really? Yeah, they're good. Good. They're good players. Do you reckon you'd be good? I think I'd be good because of the work I'd be prepared to do yeah. to be good. Yeah. Like, if you asked me to be a gaffer right now, I'd be okay. I wouldn't be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like, I'd be prepared to do the work yeah. to, There's, to get yeah. good. So I'd, I'd back that side of me. There's just so many things that you don't even realise you have to do. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. mad. Like, it's, I know it's that. such a really? shock. Yeah, it's just yeah. fucking mental. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard job. I think there's a... I wanted to ask that question because there's... Take Thierry Henry, for example. Mm. One of the best strikers ever. Yeah. yeah. Ridiculous player. And there was rumours that when he managed Belgium and it didn't go... He was there, like, number two, no? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Martinez. yeah. Yeah, yeah, When it didn't go great was apparently because he struggled to get to terms with people not being able to do what he wanted them to do. Is that true? I that don't know. That's what, that's what I read. It don't surprise, surprise me, but me. obviously these are like rare examples. A.T. Henry's a rare yeah, example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And their ability to play football is like another level to anyone else's. But and, and, not Thierry Henry. That's the thing. No, I'm it? saying, I'm talking about Thierry Henry. Oh, sorry. Like yeah. an average professional in Thierry Henry or even a national team professional in Thierry Henry is still a gap. Yeah. yeah. So his, he just probably expects everyone to be able to do what he did. Yeah. And, and it's difficult for him to just have the patience to deal with people that actually just can't do what you did. Which but, I imagine is quite frustrating when you're that good of a player. Yeah, but the benefit of having Thierry Henry as <clears throat> in your coaching staff, regardless of how good he is as a manager, it's like just the respect he'll, yeah. the players will have for him. Mm. So they'll they'll listen to what he's saying, yeah. really. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's just p players like that with that stature can can demand the respect and there's not gonna be a player that's not gonna listen to what Thierry Henry's saying to you. Really, it's a big part of a striker. as well. It's a big part of, yeah, 100%. It's a big part of management. Like, especially when you're new and let's say you don't have a big name, you have to earn the respect of the players quickly. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, then what? If, if the players don't buy into what you're doing because they don't respect you, mm. it's difficult. You can have all the ideas in the world, but they're not on board. Whereas Thierry Henry might not have the best ideas. I'm not saying he doesn't, but mm -hmm. he could. He might not. Yeah. But he's still, no one's going to second guess him. No one's going to yeah. not respect him because... No one's ever had the careers he's had in in that team. So, mm. and he did well at the World Cup, didn't he? Uh, Olympics, didn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, one one thing <coughs> with managers as well, like I see what you, what we're talking about next is how like how do you be a good manager? Yeah, yeah. I was speaking about this with the academy manager at Crystal Palace, and all the coaches at the top level, they're all really good coaches, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you've also got to be not only a world-class coach, but you have to be a really a world-class psychologist these days. Mm. Think about it. Let's say you've got a team that just won 5-0 on the weekend. Mm. You have to have a completely different approach on Monday morning in terms of how you greet the players, how you speak to them to make sure they don't you know, get too high. Mm -hmm. So then they're not, I don't know, overlooking their next opponent. opponent. Let's say it's a 2-0 loss. Mm. You're going to have to come in Monday morning completely different to that 6-0 win. Mm. How are you going to greet the players? How What's the atmosphere they're going to be like in training? How do you speak to different different individuals? Yeah. You've got to manage 23, 26 different personalities mm. after different results every single week to try and get the best out of them every week. And you have to understand that yourself first, don't you? Which yeah. I think is probably quite tough. Yeah, like a lot of coaches are world-class coaches, but they're amateur psychologists. So it's like, it's, it's like even just that is so much more than you actually than meets the eye to be a manager. Well, there's so much to do, isn't there? Because I think, again, back in the day, you had everyone was separate. Now a manager, as you say, is a psychologist, is a dad, is a scout at some points, works on transfers as well. That must be so difficult. But I guess if you can do all them things, that's what makes you such a good manager. Yeah, it's an around the clock job. Like you've mm, got to yeah. do literally everything. Like that you're talking about. They probably don't go into that much in the coaching courses. I'm sure they'll touch up on yeah. it. But like, not they're not going to make you an expert psychologist. But somehow you've just got to ha know how to get the players in the right mindset. Like you said, let's say your team's going through a bad spell and there's a lot of losses and lack of confidence. You've got to find a way to come in on a Monday or come in before a match and forget tactics. You've got to get the players to believe that they can go and win, win a football match. Yeah, And that's not easy to do. That's not something you get taught on the street, like you have to just figure that out. And each player will need a different, that as well. A different like, 
you know, some might need the arm around the shoulder, some might need no speaking to him today. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And you have to work that out again, don't yeah, you? Yeah, of course. Everyone is different. Um, who's the best manager you've ever worked with? Best manager I've ever worked with. And why, I guess? It's a tough one. Yeah. That is tough. Because I assume you've both worked with a couple, at least. Yeah. And there's probably things that stick out from different single managers. ones, yeah, yeah, which is why they're good. But if you could, if you were building a team now, for example, and you had to choose a manager, and we might not know who they are. They might be have been a, like a young manager. Yeah. Um, why were they the best manager you've ever worked with? There was... There was a good partnership I had when I was an under 21 mm -hmm. uh, with Richard Shaw, who played for Palace, mm -hmm. um, and Dave Reddington, who now manages in uh, Switzerland, I think. Cool. But just because one was, Dave Reddington was more the coach, as we were speaking earlier. Yep. It, he The way he looked see the game was exactly how I see the game. Mm. So it everything he, he was saying, I ag agreed with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was very good at coaching the tactics, coaching the, the technical details, and then Richard Shaw would be sort of the man manager. Mm. And he'd yeah, he he'd speak to me in the morning, and if I was he just I'd come away from the chat feeling like really good about myself, mm. feeling really confident, really happy, and looking forward to the week. Mm. So them two like together were really good. Um, then maybe Frank De Boer I liked. Yeah. Again, just because of how detailed he was in his sessions, very technical. But then you got like Roy Hodgson, who was like just an absolute legend, like knows how to run a football club basically. Yeah. Um, so and like oozed like class everyone respected him really done, yeah yeah um and he would also people have the uh view of view of like roy as because he's maybe a bit older that he wouldn't get involved on the training pitch but he's the one shouting at you all during training really yeah like he, he won't he still gets involved in all yeah, of that yeah. completely as if, if if he's just starting so i'd probably say them quality yeah love that um it's a tough one because there's there's obviously i feel like there's a difference in like my relationship with managers when I was, let's say in academies or yeah. a, an under 21s compared to at senior level. I'd say like all things considering my current manager is probably like head and shoulders above all the other really? gaffers in terms of reading the game, mm -hmm. in terms of um, man management, mm. in terms of getting the best out of players. Um, definitely be him. Yeah, yeah. the Snorbers manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quality. Um, that was really interesting about you two. You talk, you lot, you two know football, right? And you're in football and you do your coaching courses and different things. If you don't know, get to know. <laughs> um, you both quite like managers that are like think similarly to you, is what I'm getting. Well, players are selfish, it's I natural, think. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's natural. really interesting. Mm. I've not thought about that because mm. I think I, I only ever played young and Sunday League. So when I was young, it was more like it wasn't what I thought, it was. I was looking up to someone. Yeah. So it was like, you need to be a good role yeah, model. Yeah. And the best ones were like, another dad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I've never had the thing of, which I'm, I probably would now. If I did it now, I would want a manager that thought similarly to me. Yeah. That is well selfish, isn't it? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, well it's selfish. selfish, but it's natural, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I feel like if a manager sees the game different to the way you see it, I think you see the game, the way you see the game is pretty linked to how you are as a player anyways. Of mm. course, yeah. Like, I, like, it's so why you're not going to get a, you know, someone who's built for like a long ball, let's say in that Tony Pulis exactly. team in a in an Ange or an Arteta team because yeah. the style's just he's not going to play. Yeah, Pre yeah, 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 precisely. Yeah. So it literally comes to that. Like the way I see football is similar to my best attributes and what would suit me. Yeah. yeah. If a manager's a complete opposite and wants to play long ball, wants to just get players to run around, kick people yeah. and stuff, like I've had those managers. I don't see the game the same way they see the game. That makes such sense. So yeah. naturally, I ever feel like I'm going to be asked to do something that's completely not what I'm used to, mm -hmm. which I'll, obviously you have to adapt, otherwise you just get out of the team. Yeah. Or I'll be out of the team anyways because I adapt, but it's not my strengths. Um, whereas if you get a manager that sees the game the way you see it, he's more likely to like your, your attributes and, and you probably just go hand in hand that way. And it probably goes the other way as well. He, if it's a long ball manager yeah. and you're trying to get the ball down and play, he probably won't like you either. It, it, that's basically where it starts. And you know that subconsciously. That's yeah. probably why that kind of manager, you wouldn't... It's not like you don't like them because of their style, but you just no, you know that they're, yeah. the way they see the game isn't the same way you see the game. I get this at, uh, <laughs> get this at, on Tuesday at 7 Aside, right? Yeah. I am, <laughs> I'm one of them knobheads that 
is like, come on, get back, you need to go over there. Yeah. And the boys rinse me for it. They're like, shut up, we're playing seven aside. <laughs> but if they don't do it, I'm annoyed with them. Yeah. And when I do do it, they're annoyed at me. So it makes complete sense that you must be so annoying. I'm the worst. Yeah, but that, you need that yeah, if you want to win. Yeah, you need me. Seven aside no, or not, you boys. Do, you shut do. up. You need me. Yeah. <laughs> you um, have you ever? And we don't need to name names here. Yeah. Had any managers that you've, I've put hated, which is quite strong. No, yeah. Disliked. Hated is a strong word. Yeah. yeah. I've not hated any manager. Um, dislike. Not really. No. Not there's there's been some that little bits I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then I can also understand where they're coming from. Mm. So I've not actually disliked any manager. And I always find if I disagree with them, it might be I like disagree with them with stuff off the pitch <clears throat> and then I really agree with their stuff on the pitch or yeah. vice versa. Like I don't like the way they, they set up, but I know away from football, he's like top mm. top guy. So it's just a it's just a sport at the end of the mm. day. So No, I absolutely have hated a manager before. But <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah. Ma but you've probably played under more than, my, more than me. Under more managers, I yeah, 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 probably. What's um, a rough estimate of how many managers you played under? As in, like playing matches for them as well, because yeah. a lot of the time I was in. Yeah, um, what senior level maybe between five and eight probably. Oh, that is a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. A few teams and obviously a few managers sacked at the same team and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So a few. Yeah. Um, Why did you just hate the one. this manager? Um. And do you want to name him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still playing and football's a small world, so no, I can't, yeah, I can't, no, no, I can't publicly nah, don't eat, yeah. can't ruin myself, but um <laughs> You don't even, yeah, tell us off. Long story right. short, we obviously it comes back to what I was just saying in terms of seeing eye to eye. Yeah. The style of football not suiting me and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um but that in itself wouldn't make me hate a manager because that's just football. Yeah. Like I've I've had that with other managers mm -hmm. that yeah. didn't perhaps didn't perhaps fancy my attributes or whatever and I didn't play for them mm. but don't walk away hating them yeah, because yeah. it's just football um, but this this specific case was a bit more political than just that mm. just it's it. like when you feel like they're doing something just personally towards you and yeah like, I see I see it all the time yeah yeah like you feel that like happened a lot it happened that's like players feel like that a lot I think right yeah. okay because it like let's say it could be for multiple reasons but it's just when it's not something to do with the team and it's like why is he personally trying to dig like going at me yeah yeah yeah. That For example, you lose a game, you're losing a game 3-0. Yeah. And you come on 3-0 down last five minutes. Mm -hmm. And you don't win one challenge. Like that there's there's a challenge that you lose out on mm -hmm. and you get bollocked on the pitch as if you're the reason we're 3-0 down. Really? And then bollocked in the change room after like people that have made massive errors lead into those goals. Nothing's been said. Okay. But you're dug out. And you're dug out, and then you're also told this is why you don't play. Mm. What's the player gonna think about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. we've just lost three. No, it's got nothing to do with me. I was, I was yeah. on the bench. Um, one half like challenge in the middle of the park that didn't lead to anything. <laughs> I've lost, but somehow the whole day's my fault now. Yeah, it's it's they're they're angry that they've lost three nil, and then after that's happened, it, take it out you have. The excuses can pop up of when you can let that anger out. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. And like, I obviously understand, like, he's, managers are human at the end of the day. So, like yeah. I said, you're, you're, they're human that they've lost 3-0. But I just think in that situation, it's, they look, the, their guys that they've played and made errors, he obviously knows they didn't mean to. He mm -hmm. doesn't want to lay it out on them. A player that is banging on his door talking about wanting to play, any excuse to tell him that's why you don't play. Plus the fact that he's angry, he just lets it all out there. But the best man managers probably don't do that. Yeah. Um, or if, or they, if do, they they apologise and or yeah, say like the, the, the one day out on you. That, yeah. that would the be Monday. the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah they that happens pull, pull quite you out. And then and then player if, if a manager does that and then on a Monday he calls you and says, look, my like yeah. I was just angry, we lost whatever. Players respect. Everyone's that. an yeah. adult, aren't they? Like That's you will make mistakes. I've I've had times where I've seen players go at it, playing a manager go at it during training, like proper heated back and forth in front of everyone so it's a bit like it's a bit embarrassing for the manager mm. and then the monday or like the, a day or two after they've come in uh let's say apologize and the manager's actually said to the player i like that like, yeah, I, like yeah. I like seeing a bit of character and a bit of fight back regardless of if it made him look bad like yeah because you don't want to you don't want a player that just falls over do you yeah any sign yeah. of like conflict but that is that is football right we're all adults we're all men we've only played men's football like you have a scrap with the other team. And then you, if if they're a good person, 
and like I would always go over and apologise and I'd yeah. laugh yeah. and dap them up and I think there's a that is very telling that you can argue not a problem people get angry at each other that's fine if you apologise you'll forget about it yeah. almost instantly right or it will build your respect more Yeah. if they're not doing that I know you can't say it but I can dickhead yeah because that's not you what you don't dislike that per, that person because of his tactics. That's more he do, it's just not being a nice person, really. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, got, it's got nothing to do with tactics yeah. because at the end of the day, there's so many different ways to win a football match. There's so many different ways to set yeah. up a team. So no player is going to walk away hating a manager. Yeah, unless, unless they've got their own problems, unless they they refuse to mm -hmm. look at themselves or hold yeah. themselves accountable. If you're an honest player that looks at yourself and holds yourself accountable. You might just look at a situation and say, okay, cool, I don't fit in this team because of the way they're playing at the minute. That's fine. Which also happens, doesn't it? Yeah. It happens at every level. It doesn't mean you're a poor player. You look at someone like a Sterling gets booted out of Chelsea and ends yeah. up at Arsenal. It's not because he's a poor player. He just doesn't suit what that manager's trying yeah, to do. Mm -hmm. for sure. But as long as it's done you know, with respect and two adults talking to each other, you're not going to hate a manager. But mm. if you feel like it's personal or things like that, that's when you might feel like, yeah, this, is, this isn't right. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Right. Let's go more positive. Yeah. <laughs> Real world. We've talked about why managers, uh, what makes a good manager. Yeah. Pep Guardiola, mm. one of the best, if probably argued the best. Why? Why has mm. he been so successful? I think he's just a master with really high quality players, isn't he? Like, mm. he's just a master. He's just mastered the. He, like we spoke about previously, he sort of changed. He sort of brought in the new age of playing football, like mm. fullbacks rotating in. It's very possession based. Everyone a lot closer together. Mm -hmm. um, a certain style of football, and he just I don't know. He's just learned how to master it with over over his years as a player at Barca and and as a coach at what Barca, Bayern, and City now. Bit of a pioneer, isn't he? I I, I, I mean, I might be wrong, but I'd never seen anyone do inverted fullbacks really that's, before Pep. I mean, it was Cruyff, wasn't it? Really, if we're going oh, back, yeah. he done like that's. I think Pep's come out and said that's where a lot of his inspiration right, has okay, yeah. come from, Johan Cruyff. So, mm. but again, that's you got to take it and adapt it then, don't yeah, you, to the modern cool. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the bit I rate a lot about him because, you know, he's obviously won stuff with teams with huge budgets, and that that comes into it. And you can debate: mm -hmm. is it authentic? Is it, or is it yeah. because he's had a big? But like for me, it's like the fact that he's been such a pioneer and through the ages has almost brought about a new way of football that now everyone's trying to play. Mm -hmm. That isn't just because you have a big budget, that's because you see the game in a different way and you can sort of picture things and picture ways you can basically advance the game. And that, yeah. that takes someone who, who's really smart, really good at reading football. So, you know, if, if he was just literally buying 11 players and sticking them on the pitch and hoping that United. the quality Chelsea. Well, that's that's what happens. <laughs> they bought eleven players. They that's, bought fifteen. <laughs> that's what happens if you don't have a manager that knows how to assemble top players yeah. and make it work. You just keep spending money and nothing comes. But he's not done that. Like it's mm. clear that there's a method behind what he's doing. I know there is still problems with how much they've spent and stuff. But end of the day, you can't take away what he's done for football. You can see tactically how he sets up, and it's it seems like he the demands he puts on the players is higher than any other manager yeah definitely um and that's why you see somebody like the, no player goes into that team thinking if i play average this game i'm going to still be playing next week mm -hmm. if they play average a lot of them are man city players think they're going to get dropped i mean you look at man city's bench it's ridiculous maybe Punching just it. harland maybe just harland yeah <laughs> maybe <laughs> but it's that it wouldn't surprise me if he got dropped one week like he's, he's yeah, been dropped yeah, before. i know what you mean he has been dropped before I mean, he's I been mean, dropped for like a game he, before and Alvarez would come Obviously, in. he'll have his own ambitions. He wants yeah. to smash every record, so he's never going to chill anyways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like, the demands is high. Yeah. Like, you've seen him walking off a pitch where he scored two goals at halftime and Pep's like trying to drill something into him. Yeah. I think he's a bit of a wanker for that. I think no. it's a bit performative. Yeah, so I don't think I it is. I completely Do disagree. Not. He, he, uh, he's not thinking. You don't understand what's going yeah. on in his mind. He's not thinking, right, let me do something for the cameras. These people, up, people like he Pep, people like yeah, Pep, you won't understand them. Like, he's, he's a different <laughs> different human being. His mindset isn't, it's not about- They don't it. switch off. He's just thinking, right, well, he's just got that wrong. He's got this wrong. We've worked on this. He's not doing that. Like, he's not thinking, oh, good goal, Haaland. Yeah, good play, good play. Yeah, good oh, goal, shit, Haaland. cameras are here. Let me yeah. go and perform. He's thinking at every little detail of where everyone should be. And if they're not on it, 
then he's going to tell them. But I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. I also right? think... He gets hate, man. They, but... I also think they pay so much attention to detail. He's got so much that he's going to go and say at half time. And he's maybe five minutes before Haaland's made this run that he thinks is poor and he needs to... I don't know, whatever it was. So he needs to get if it If he out. doesn't go and say that to him straight away, yeah. he's thinking by the time he does his talking, that he's going to forget and not tell him. Yeah. And his attention to detail is so high that he doesn't want to forget. He wants to make sure he gets yeah. that across to Ireland. So it's, that's just one example, but he does it all the time. I'm mm. sure it's just, that could be I've a, seen this. I yeah. need to go and say it because I've got so much else I'm going to say. If I don't say this to him now, I'm going to forget. Yeah. Okay. You they're, lot do change my mind a lot on this program. They're, they're very passionate, the Spanish managers as well. I think that's just natural passion of their yeah. like arm movements and all this on the side. Yeah. Like they're, right. they're just very naturally expressive. Yeah. I think look, everyone, and I also think everyone knows that Guardiola's top. Like he doesn't yeah. have to do. Oh, he doesn't course. have to do these yeah. small things anymore to change people's perceptions on him. Like yeah. that, that. Maybe Arteta. Bro, I was getting. I'm not saying Arteta is doing that, but like there would be a reason for Arteta to do that as a newer manager. Yeah. I, get, I don't, yeah, I don't I think you. he is, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm just saying like, Guardiola for I think what? Arteta's more aware of the cameras. That's what I mean. He's more aware. But like he's yeah. younger and he's he's still building his whole PR, if you like. Brand, yeah. It's, yes. <laughs> Did you see the other day on Instagram? He put a, a Arte picture up. Yeah. And Rafael yeah, Nadal yeah, yeah, yeah. just retired. Was, oh, yeah. He put, he <laughs> and he looked, he, looked, he, looked, he looked very there handsome in it. And he, he said, like, he like, when your bro posts a dead pic, but you look great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he might be, but not God. Guardiola's. He's, he's past, recently he's come done. out of his playing career as well. So, more yeah. recent. So, yeah. he's, he's probably more. It's probably more in his mind. Okay. I concede. Yes. As I always do. Right then. Why do things like Unai Emery was terrible at Arsenal, mm. unbelievable before Arsenal, and is now unbelievable after Arsenal? Why does that happen? Lots of reasons. Yeah. So many reasons. I, th I think managers are, based on their previous like, experience of the level their club was at, is, will help them going into their new job, if that makes sense. So if you've gone from a sixth place team to another sixth place team, it's like there's no adapting period really. Mm -hmm. And if they're playing the same style, again, no adapting period. Like it might be a, a month or two just to get used to the new players. Mm. But if you're going from, uh, where was he at before? He was at a- He was in Spain. He was in Spain, Spain. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. coming to Arsenal. I think it's a, it don't, probably don't play the similar style. I think it was a different transition period and Arsenal weren't playing how he sets up a team before that, yeah. were they? So I mean, the whole club was horrid at that time, wasn't it? So that, I guess yeah, coming I was, from I was winning that. Europa League in Spain, different league to replace to a Premier, League, Premier League giant that is now yeah. playing shit fans don't like the club the club don't like the fans yeah it's like imagine if Pep and Arteta if Pep and Arteta switch places I think they'd be fine yeah but if Pep and if Pep and Ange switch places wow I don't think it would like they'd both struggle I reckon mm. early on especially mm. um, just because it's a different set of players who you've who, who don't fit your style and it's a di they're play it's a different level you're working with mm. I think there's so much luck involved in management as well that doesn't get spoken enough about. I think, obviously, the the struggle you're talking about early on is natural, but there's fine margins. Arteta was probably one or two games from getting a sack at one point at Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just one of those games, like, one player doesn't produce a moment that wins you that game or mm -hmm. whatever, and then you're out of the job and everyone looks at what you've done and it's, it's a disaster. That's so interesting. You're gonna have that period where you struggle and you adapt, but managers need time and obviously you're not, you don't, you're not like entitled to that time. So you do need like, you just need something to go for you at one point mm -hmm. to buy you that time to build what you wanted it even to do. It took a while with Pep at City, didn't it? Like yes. people forget that. Yeah, yeah. Black, yeah. He, he wasn't doing, anything yeah. great he was playing start. out and like losing the ball they were yes, getting, losing yes, like five yeah. nil sometimes mm -hmm. yeah exactly so if you can find a club that's gonna trust you and and give you the time you need to assemble your squad and assemble the way you want to play you'll be you'll be all right i think you know emery is obviously a top manager yeah i think at one point there was too many poor results in a row mm -hmm. and if that happens at one point you have to get sacked whereas one of those results you know, something else happens if you look back, like, I don't know, someone scores a chance they should have scored. Mm. Who knows, he could have managed, he might have turned that tide around and, and he'd be still here. So That's you have bizarre, to take that, like for something like that, for an example, there's obviously other examples where a manager just isn't cut for the job. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But I don't think anyone can sit here and say, you know, Emery couldn't be Arsenal manager. I just like if think, he came in now, he'd probably be all right, wouldn't he? Yeah, and, and yeah. I'm, well, he might still have it's to tight, adapt, but I'm just saying like his level of like how good he is as a manager. Yeah, like yeah. He could manage a club of Arsenal sides. Yeah, but I do think some managers 
personality and the way they play football is suited for different level teams. Of course. But I wouldn't say he's he's suited for a mid table team. No. Like, I wouldn't class him as that kind of manager. But he's always been just off the top. Yes. I think he's won the Europa League four or five yeah, times. Yeah, which like is that. just which but, is but the, the second. The, 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 problem, the problem is though, you, you forget when he took over Arsenal, if he just Listen, if I'm he, not doubting he couldn't either. Yeah, if he just replicated that, he'd be all right. We weren't at a stage where we wanted a title winner. <laughs> If we he, taking he, anything. If he could just get us fourth, yeah. no one would be saying he has to go. Yeah. So we weren't like, maybe t would he be able to now go from fourth, fifth to winning leagues? Maybe not. That that That's a up for debates, but I'm sure he could have got us to yeah. finishing in the top four. I just think it didn't go for him. And then you got to remember as well, taking over Wenger was, is tough. Oh. It's tough. And I'll there was probably the transition. Got the he, yeah, like, he yeah, got sacked yeah. earlier than... He wouldn't have been given that time. No, exactly. Yeah. He got the time because they just sacked someone they thought might they might have for, for years. And yeah. they thought, right, we don't want to just get into United's Yeah. If situation. you look at all of the big clubs that have got rid of a big manager, yeah. the one after is never shit. Does, it's Literally, David Moyes, United. There's never shit. been one that's done well, I don't yeah. think. It's difficult. It? It's very difficult. Like We'll see with Liverpool's manager now. It'll be interesting to well. see. He's, he started well. Hmm. It's all perspective, Emery I suppose. started well, yeah. too. Um, <laughs> the thing you said about luck as well, it's so... I don't know if you can like obviously I completely agree with it but I think I don't know if it was Arteta that come out and said like in football you can be you know you can be an inch away from being a world champion and being a legend or being you know a loser because let's say you've, yeah. let's say a shot goes in off the post yeah. mm -hmm. an inch to the left and it goes wide mm -hmm. and you could that could be the difference between let's say winning or whatever and any a title yeah. or not yeah. makes me think of the World Cup um, Argentina France where uh Emi Martinez saved a that volley in like the is, last that, great minute. Example. What about the one and on the floor though as well? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, one yeah, he's yeah, 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 yeah. volley yeah. on the floor. Look at that. that that's it. That's an inch between, you know, Messi's France legacy. Win. That's what World I was going to say. Winner. Messi wins that, and everyone ha happily says go. Yeah. Whereas he doesn't win that, and he hasn't got a World Cup to his name. And in Argentina, there'll still be arguments that Maradona's yeah. over him. Like it changes just everything. Of an inch of nothing to just do with because Messi. Mar yeah. Just because Martinez yeah. made a save. But yeah. Messi is the goat though, so yeah, that's right. We should, we should an episode of what would have happened if <laughs> it didn't go in or this yeah, foul. Yeah. I think we, we, haven't, we haven't spoke about it here. I don't know if we'll fit it in, but we should do an episode just on the new manager bounce. We could, or, oh, or just not even just the bounce, like new, a new manager what coming happens, in. Yeah. That's a whole yeah. episode, yeah. 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 Cause Cause that is so that. interesting. Right, boys. Top five managers of all time let's let's have it as a discussion a yeah surprise. Okay. yeah <laughs> Get thinking yeah uh, no, well, it's, throw it's a name out there and we'll discuss hard. it i think angelotti gets a shot yeah i think i i've i think i've got my older wow i've, I've had pre i've thought about this yeah. previous times yeah um for me it's pep is the, the best is, yeah Better than sir alex. i think you either go pep or sir alex and my again my style of football the way i've watched more of him yeah. uh and just the way he's changed changed football the level he's maintained Mm -hmm. I think it's I'm going Pep. We've, why are they Why are they better than Ancelotti? Just because mm. of the the football that is played under them, and the football played under the Sarai is very different to Pep. Yeah. Oh, you're I saying Ancelotti? No, no, I, 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 I'm saying okay, Pep football, cool. Yeah. So Alex, just because he wasn't of, playing the best football in the league at the time. What Alex Ferguson? Not really. Yeah. No. I. I his is more. His is obviously the longevity and longevity, the and how much he's won, it. and the respected like. <clears throat> every, I think most players would probably say, not of this generation, maybe like the t t 2010 generation or uh, like the noughties, mm -hmm. would say would say Alex Ferguson's the best ever. I I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely like, obviously hear it. I just think every year Ancelotti's almost getting closer to, you have to kind of throw him in the debate. He's with like, he's got- Do we have a got, Premier League not got the, That's what I'm basically trying to say. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. got, in the Premier League, no, but what's Sir Alex has done with that up with that team? Like they United weren't no world beaters when he took them over. Like they, he, he was there he, for twenty five years. At some point that's they were. Okay, that's the, team, I mean, the team that won the twenty eight, yeah, the two thousand eight Champions yeah, League was the world beating no, team. No, that's what I'm saying. But when he took when he arrived at the club, the first day, they weren't world beaters. No, he no. he brought he done well. He brought the not class of ninety two through the academy yeah. and made them win the treble. Yeah. Like and then he maintained that for fifteen years. Yeah. So that's for me why he's second to Pep. I think either of them, I wouldn't argue either way with them, but Pep's just my style of manager. Yeah, Pep, obviously. I don't think Ancelotti's close to them too. I and think Ancelotti's won stuff everywhere. Oh, five Champions Not League Everton. winners. That is you naughty, to win by stuff the way. Everton. Yeah, but he, he said he didn't win at Everton, did no, he? No, I mean... <laughs> he was dead at Everton. In Italy and my Spain, UCLs, leagues. Five Champions League winners, 
One English champion with Chelsea, one German champion with Bayern Munich, two Spanish champions of Real Madrid, Italian champion with AC Milan, French Who's champion with PSG. Did he not win the Champions League got... with Bayern? Uh, no, no, didn't win it with Bayern. Okay. AC Milan twice. You've done it with Milan and obviously Madrid. I mean, 2002, 2003, oh, AC I didn't Milan realize he won, won that yeah. yeah, that is Fair. mental. But I'm still going them two. Because I think award, like, obviously you have to go... Um, who's, your top, who's your top three then? Or your top Them three. Them three. But what order? I want an order, Ken. So I'm going Pep, Alex, Sir Alex. I'm going to go... I mean, Ancelotti weren't going to be my third. That might have convinced me. Were you going to go Jose? No, I was going to go Arson. Mm. Okay. I was going to go Arsene Wenger and Jose Mourinho. You're going to get pelted. I think the, I, I'm happy. Wenger over Mourinho, by the way. I, I'd go those five, Please no speak. problem. Like, Please I speak. agree with those five. <laughs> um, I want your, what, what order wait, are you going to do? Who are you heavy, taking out? You Ancelotti. put Ancelotti in, didn't you? Wait, what, what was your five going to be? Was I'd Ancelotti wait. not going to be in your five? Originally, before you said that. Who yeah. was going to be in there? Wenger and Mourinho. And? And who else? Um, Pep and... Oh no, who did I? Have? Oh yeah, no, maybe maybe Ancelotti will be in. Yeah, but he was going to be fifth probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm happy with the five, but I wouldn't. Ancelotti not fifth. Pep, obviously, he's so rated. That he's so Pep, good, but oh, I don't know. Ancelotti his, is his, a fantastic his, shout for two. His no. buying, oh, his buying spell, his, his buying spell was very Pep, underwhelming. Pep and Sir Alex are better than Ancelotti. Like this, you can't. I don't think you can argue it. The, my my problem with Pep is bro was dead at Everton. My problem with. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he kept them in the league. I think if you keep Everton in the yeah, league, yeah, Everton yeah. can't get relegated. They sign. They got like some magnet. With them. <laughs> <laughs> they can't, man. Tell you. No, my okay. What you just said about Sir Alex in terms of what he came into wasn't world beaters. He managed to turn that into twenty-five years of success. I, that's why I think Sir Alex massive. Pep, there's an argument for he goes into the Barca job with the best player of all time. Best team of all time. Best team, almost. but yeah. with with the best player of all yeah, time. Yeah. That team's winning whatever they won without him. He then goes to Bayern. They were on a bad spell just before him, though. Of course, with but Shabby, he, I know Vignard. exactly. But they came into it like okay. Ronald. Like they came into he, he had it was he had Messi. They they, they, their, their style of football changed. From, the style from one changed. Of, this is this is why I they couldn't, were can't disregard he come him. In and they changed. The style. I, yes. I could have managed Barcelona for a bit. You can't like. disregard nah. his style. <laughs> you could have come in, bro. Right, Xavi, Iniesta, right. prime Lionel Messi, nah, not, nah. not washed Messi, prime no, Messi. Yeah, but let me. He's saying I reckon to come in. Pep come in when Barca had Xavi and Iniesta. They had Ronaldinho and Eto, but they were they were playing and like uh, Ibrahimovic. They were, but they were they were he, losing no, games. Pep signed Ibra. Oh, did he? Yeah, and then but they were losing games. Like they weren't they weren't doing great. They and still then he won leagues. In. Yeah, but Sir Alex lost leagues. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, he when Pep took him over, they weren't like they, went they were to actually, another level. They were actually okay. in a like the, the fans were onto him. Whereas he come in, took him into another level, and then that's where you he built that sort of tiki taka. I don't so, think tiki taka was before Pep. You're kind of going at the minute that one club man is more impressive. You're kind of going doing it everywhere. No, I, I, think, I, think, Sir Alex I think all of it comes into. I'm just trying to make an argument for why I feel like. Pep is obviously top. I get but the I, argument, I yeah. feel like people, I feel like that just gets thrown around a lot more than people dissect. Like people don't dissect it enough. If you dissect it, that Barca team, I think Sir Alex does well with it. Ancelotti does well with it. Wenger does well with it. Marina does well. But with no it. one's made me I think, feel like I think the I've current City team. The, that, That's what that, it is. That, that I can't argue yeah. with. But the current City team, with the budget, with the 115 charges, all those managers hmm. do well with that team, with yeah. that with that club. I'm not arguing that... Bayern Munich, he's gone. He's not done great. Wait, so you're saying yeah. Pep might not be first? No, but that's, I'm not, that's the argument. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm not arguing the, the like, what they've achieved. In terms of how he, he it's just like feel, obviously. The, yeah. what, the, the football I've watched has been the best from Pep Guardiola. Like, he's made, he's made, he's played the best football any team's ever played. That I agree. Yep. So, I, and then he's also won ridiculous amounts. So that's mm. why I've done it. Although he did it with loads of money and the best players in the world. And then at Bayern, he, some say he could have, he, he underachieved. Mm -hmm. But... For me, that's just how good he's made a, a single team play. Mm. I think he has to be up there. And also the fact he jumped ship from Bayern so quickly. Yeah. Um, I like that. That always played on my mind. Yeah, like, why couldn't he wait till he done it then at Bayern? Did he realise yeah. he hasn't got the funds to, I think that's to, just, I mean. to just grab who he wants? I think when you're, a, when you're quickly. a serial winner like that, you think, right, I'm not going to win it. Bang, I'm gone. I'm not going to win. Which is Bayern. fair. Yeah. But, then, but then, exactly, then you argue, okay, how good are you? No, I'm not, he might not have thought that, but it, that's what... That's, I reckon he did, though. Yeah. Because he yeah. left there pretty quickly. It would have been... I reckon he's thinking, right, this is, this is the be best a long turnaround. Yes, yeah. yes. I've, me... I've won a few leagues here. Yeah. I probably won't win the Champions League yeah. unless I really try for like the next yeah. five years, which I don't want to do. 
I'm I, going to see. I think he almost thought he couldn't win the Champions League with Bayern because yeah. mm. the, the the league standards aren't up to aren't up to it. So it's hard to flick on and off between the standards. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in La Liga and and uh, Prem, it's mm. easier. I think maybe that was in his thinking. All of those things went, yeah. That, and then that's when I say Ancelotti is impressive because of what he's done. Who's your day. five then? Like, like, same same five right? as you. I'm gonna go. Grenade, I'm gonna go. Marie, I'm gonna go. Mourinho fifth. <laughs> I'm gonna go Wenger fourth. You, I, 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 yes. I agree, but Who's I cannot fight? tell you the pelters we are gonna Why, get man? for playing because it's Arsenal. Yes. and Wenger nah. had six years at the end, or how no, long but, it was but, of doing but, nothing. But he was a pioneer. But, but Wenger, exactly. Yes. If we're talking about I pioneers, agree. he changed English football. So for, so for someone to come, yeah, unknown, yep. and change football. And there are multiple clubs on, on, on and off the shit. Pits, and then, and then from the back end, what he done for Arsenal without any money whatsoever and still managed to keep Arsenal qualifying for the Champions League mm -hmm. like it was nothing with some poor teams at one point. Yeah. Horrid team. Oh, we had some dead teams like, like Senderos. Mourinho could... Whoa. Senderos was dead. Mourinho, I don't think Mourinho could do that. I think Mourinho yeah. is another one similar to Pep where he's obviously a joke, but if the going got tough, he'd run away. He, doesn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't stay. He wouldn't stay like the way Wenger did at yeah. Arsenal and say, okay, I'm going to... It's a different era, but I'm gonna we're gonna be competitive still. We might not be able to win anything, but mm -hmm. we'll be we'll be in and around it. Yeah. I don't think he'd be able to do it. Um and his style wasn't it's not someone you could the ones yeah. I enjoyed watching. So that's yeah. why I'd put him fifth. Yeah. But I, I, I still and know then he's, he's so kid. good. Nah, he's, he's going actually second. Or you going <laughs> and just just, just want to know your list. <laughs> I'm gonna go Sir Alex Third. And Shorty second. And Schlotty second and Pep, and Pep first? Don't or are you put it into his head. I'm waiting because he's not. I'm trying to get you out of him. <laughs> or you going? I'm going to go Pep second. Yeah, okay. Woo! It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> Fair it's enough, going to get people talking, but oh, look, I'm not I'm not going to follow the crowd and, and say what I'm everyone else would say. I'm, I've made... That's You've my made opinion. What's your argument? Mine would be... Um, before this, everyone, mine would have been... Yeah. <laughs> Pep... Sir Alex, Ancelotti, Mourinho, Venga. Yeah. After yeah. this, <laughs> you've swung me around, boy. Mine's going to be... So yours is the same as mine, but you've put Mourinho ahead of Wenger. Yeah, mine's now going to be Pep, Ancelotti, Ferguson, Venga, Mourinho. So you've moved Venga... You just changed your whole list, bro. Correct. <laughs> you moved Venga and Ancelotti. Yeah, yeah, looking at Ancelotti's list... Bro, you can't Champions look at that League. and just say yeah, know, first. Yeah. Italian, French, You're German, acting Spanish, like the people England. up ahead of him haven't won <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. No, that's fair. True. Yeah, okay. Did, I mean, we've all had the same people, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there anyone... Is there anyone that, you, that has an honourable mention? Mm. Brendan Rodgers. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Oh, Big, Sam. <laughs> Big Sam. Big Sam is him not one, actually. I'm changing my list. Yeah. We've got to get Big Sam's the ghost. Yeah. Like, he's been no, mentioned like 20 he's times. He's biggest fan. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. Is there anyone we've really left out? Or well, let me let me swing it. Underrated managers. Kind of comes under the same. Yeah. Underrated. I'm saying Wenger still. I think Wenger's underrated. Definitely Heavily underrated. Probably because of the, the way it ended. And the Arsenal. Well, I think Brendan if you win Brendan it, Rogers like, is underrated. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't say that as a joke. Yeah, I generally think he's underrated. He's yeah. top manager. Um, they're the two that spring to mind. Think, who's done really well? Simeone's done good. Big Sam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Simeone's good. Yeah, Simeone's like, good. Yeah. Not, not my type of football, but still, you can't, can't argue with what he's doing. Underrated Southgate, you could say underrated. Mm. Yeah, what he I, mm. I think criminally underrated. Yeah, but I don't, know, I, I don't like comparing the international managers. It's obviously completely different, but. Yeah. He's obviously done very well, but then you can just argue that he doesn't want anything. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, you could argue that with the team he's had and the games they've won under him, he should have won all he's of done well. He's all Has he won a game that he shouldn't have won? Has he won a game that we're expected to lose? Yes. And Germany, 2-0, Wembley. I think that's the one. I that, don't know that, if we were expect. I thought it was like that was going to be a but, tight but, game but, and we turn them over. But that was yeah. that was a game we, sh like, on paper, we had a better squad than them at that's the time. That's what I mean. Yeah. But obviously it was Germany, so it was like always going to be okay. And it's like the penalty. But I think we've had a lot of maybe. games against big name countries. But when you go 11 v 11, like if you look at them, we have a better team. Yeah. But we've lost. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, we haven't. So maybe Southgate's not in it. <laughs> like he was Rogan. good. He's done yeah. well, but like underwritten. I feel is... like the criticism's deserved yeah. to an extent. No, I... Is Mikel Arteta currently underrated? By non-Arsenal fans, 
mainly i think yeah but yeah. again i can understand their point of view because it's so early so uh, but are we just basing so uh, the reason i say that is because the whole argument is he's not won anything but what he has done is taken a whole club that's identity was gone we were in eighth i did not watch arsenal no, yeah, for probably a year two yeah, years. yeah yeah i agree and then he's bought it back so when we're talking we've spoken a lot about managers being everything yeah in that sense he has bought life back to Arsenal. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't get a ticket to go and watch the game. Yeah. He's literally, well, he's trans he transformed the club from top to bottom, really. Yeah. And he's got all the all the staff, every single player buying into his beliefs, his philosophy, mm. which is like That's near on to impossible do. to do. Yeah. 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 Um, so, and now Arsenal are a serious team. And he's done that in the space of three to four years. Yeah. I think, ridiculous. I think, obviously, by other fans who are like so biased as well because there's obviously other fans that can just look at football for what it is and, and make yeah yeah like just understand that he's done a great he's a job manager, yeah. yeah then there's others that would just literally say no he's not won anything so yeah. I'm, not, I'm not giving him any props but anyone that understands football will see that like what he's done it, it's, it's been massive and obviously you know, everyone only remembers winners so we can't ever to mm. compare him to the people we've just spoken about no. until he starts winning something but it's not but like there's there's still like it's not like winners and losers like you can still like you just said brendan rogers very good manager mm -hmm. didn't win anything doesn't mean he's not a good manager yeah like uh, he, he, arteta's mm -hmm. improved something every single year drastically i think mm -hmm. his ability to adapt is what impresses me as well yeah. like we don't play the same now that we played in the first season we nearly won the league he's one that has potential to be in that in the in the top 10 list i reckon definitely by the end of his career yeah Top so, ten, top ten, top. Well, he's got potential to be in top five. If he, yeah, like, that's he, just a big, like a big ask. It depends. No, of course, but, but he's, he's got potential. Out of people 20, now, he's got one of the most 20, potential. 25 years I left think he gets to there. manager. Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's, it's impossible it, to call in it. It's but. impossible to call, but if he starts, I think if he wins the Maybe first when one, Pep Arsenal, retires. <laughs> if he wins, if he wins the first at Arsenal, you then I reckon he bang, bang, yeah. yeah, because I also think it's that first the biggest pressure. Once he wins the first, let's say you go two years about winning. But as long as you're still around it, no mm -hmm. one's calling for him to go. Yeah. But like until he wins that first, like people are always gonna have yeah, that yeah. on yeah. So. Lastly, yeah. Jurgen Klopp is hailed as we one didn't even of, talk about him actually. Yeah. That's what I'm I, about. I'd say <laughs> when I was saying honourable mentions, I was trying to think. I mean he's he doesn't get in the top five, but he's an honourable he, mention. He'd be honourable mention, yeah. It's a big He'd I be in the top him. seven, probably. Can I just say one Premier League. Yeah, again, it's what, nine years? But again, this is this, up you, against City. Again, exactly. I who who I put top of the list because of that. We're rating Arteta for the same thing Klopp did, but Klopp went one step further. 100%. My, the reason I'm doing it is because if Arsenal now went four years, I know they won a the Champions League, right, mm. fine. If Arsenal now went four years, Arteta now went four years without winning the league because City, no one would put Arteta in the same bracket as Klopp. But Klopp got that one. Sorry, if we got one, right. if we got one in the next four years, no, they nine years of one. But they Klopp's also not. also done really well at previous clubs. He's done that. Again, I know he was respected coming into the job. Yeah, Arteta has built mm -hmm. himself from the ground up. It was his, it's his first club. Yeah, he'd won he won the league with Dortmund, which was mm -hmm. which is a hard thing to do. So he had that coming into the job. I think if Arteta wins a league in the Champions League, yeah, and then just, not gonna just be in the one same of each conversations, Pep, because of his longevity. But it's like. You're mm. still going to be... Wait, are you saying Klopp's Klopp, in the sorry. same... No, he'll be in the conversation with Klopp. I reckon if he wins a oh, Prem... Klopp, the yeah. footballing world, he wouldn't. Do you not think? Nope. That would only be because of the Arsenal bias. Yeah, but then you, can't, you can't really... But like, you got to... I, I, I also think it's drill this into these fuckers that they need I to I also think it's his first club, though, as well. Like Klopp was a, was like a Dort, uh, Dortmund legend as well. Let's, let's say... Real. What's the year? 2024. Let's say you get... To, let's say we go 2030. to... 2030. Yeah. 2030. And By 2030, he's won one Premier League, one Champions League. And the, the times he's not won it, he's pushed the team. It would also like depend Liverpool. on what's happened, though. Like, let's say City don't get charged nothing and they just remain this powerhouse mm. and he's pushed an un, like basically a machine. Then yeah. you'd have to give it to him. But like, let's say City don't keep doing what they've done and then he's just lost titles where he shouldn't have. Then yeah. it's different. Because yeah. the biggest thing about Klopp, Klopp with, in any other era doesn't win one Premier League. In any other era? Yeah, he wins. He wins Any more. other era, he wins more. Than oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I yeah. thought you meant less. Yeah, if no. you look at, if you look at, 
Yeah. I think, I think, six, I think yeah. over a five year period, I think there was one point between them. <laughs> which is insane. Which correlates to four, yeah. four Prem's titles yeah. in one. But when you put it like that, you can't. Like, like we spoke about earlier, the fight line. Line mar fine yeah. margins. Fine but margins. That one point is the difference between people saying number one and not even on the list. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I miss so him. Switch, switch it around. And I miss him. I miss Klopp. <laughs> no, fuck Klopp, man. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> No, I'm joking. Cool. I love you, man. If you're watching. So that was Managers Done. Join us next week where we'll be talking all things agents. And we might even have a special little guest in with us. So see you then.